Up next in the XC Showdown, we have the Santa Cruz Blur. The Blur is Santa Cruz to its core. It's got a comfortable fit and feel with a very confident demeanor. It's no slouch on the climbs either. And it does come in a couple of flavors for the XC Racer and the Trail Rider alike. So is it the ultimate XC bike? Stick around to find out. So talking about a couple of details and geometry before we get in and go ride this thing, like the Cervelo ZFS5, the blur is a little bit more on the trail side of the spectrum. That's not how at all what I had written. <laughs> <laughs> so like the Cervelo ZFS5, the Blur comes in two different styles, a 100 millimeter rear travel style and a 115 millimeter rear travel style. The one we have today is the 115. It is the TR version. So it does come with a 120 millimeter fork. And like all the other bikes in our test, it does use a flex stay suspension design. Santa Cruz calls it super light. With a 67.1 degree head tube angle, the Blur is the second steepest bike in our entire test. It has the shortest reach and nearly the shortest wheelbase. So on paper, its geometry looks a little more traditional XC, apart from a taller, typical Santa Cruz front end. And I think that is what makes it feel a bit more like a trail bike when you're actually out on the trail. The chainstays are size specific, so kudos to Santa Cruz for thinking about tall people and short people. And the cockpit does have a bit more of a trail feel to it with a normal-ish length stem and a, a normal-ish handlebar. And I think that's why I felt right at home on the Blur. So let's talk about how this thing rides. So how does the Blur do when pointed uphill? Like the Cervelo ZFS5, it has a bit more of a trail bike feel to it. It has a bit more of an active suspension design, which does provide a lot of traction and comfort and control, but that does come at the cost of a bit of efficiency. In fact, I found the Blur to provide the most traction and control out of all of the bikes in our test. It handled steep, technical, loose climbs the best with a fair amount of composure. It smoothed out bumps the best and contoured the ground more easily. The Oeth and Anthem are gonna be quicker when it comes to smooth fire road climbing, of course. That said, the Blur finds itself right in the mix when it comes to overall climbing performance, if only for its technical climbing ability. And in my mind, it's more of an endurance race bike than like a World Cup XC race bike. The Blur doesn't have as forward leaning of a body position when riding either. It's more upright, comfortable, and casual than bikes like the Oeth and Anthem. Keep in mind, this is the TR edition, so it is a bit more trail and it's designed to be that way. The XC version will be more forward leaning, a little lower front end, and you know it will have steeper angles. However, I didn't find it so upright that the front end felt vague and wandery. It was still easy to control and navigate on tight technical sections. And I'd imagine that would come down to the overall shorter wheelbase and those size specific chainstays. Overall on the climbs, the blur fits, feels, and pedals more like a trail bike than it does a traditional XC race bike. And don't take that to mean that the blur is no faster than like a tall boy. Uh, think of it as like tall boy light, where it's, it's trail bike, but made to go uphill better. So how does it go downhill? For a bike that is designed to go uphill as well as this, does, the Blur has no business being as fun and capable as it is on the descents. The suspension really comes alive on the descents, providing a ton of traction, control, and pop. It's a very, very fun bike to ride. And for the most part, I found myself riding it like I would ride my bigger trail bikes. The Blur's super light suspension design does an incredible job of making the most of its 115 millimeters of travel. It feels the softest off the top out of all the bikes in our test. I don't want to use the word plush, but it's getting pretty close. It smooths out small trail chatter well without feeling at all vague or sloppy or, or too big. There's a distinct level of traction and control that I didn't experience with any of the other bikes. Much in the same way that Orbea can make a bike pedal and climb better than its travel numbers would suggest, Santa Cruz has a way of making a bike descend better than its numbers. And I think the key here is its suspension design. The Blur's geometry is a bit more traditional, uh, keeping the bikes handling quick and lively. It's easy to corner and maneuver with a shorter overall wheelbase and moderate head tube angle. With that shorter wheelbase, it's not the most stable bike in our test in terms of geometry, but the suspension does a good job of, of making up for that 
by making the trail smoother. There's a good balance here between the front and the back wheels too with no like extreme body gymnastics required to get your weight centered up. I don't normally describe XC bikes as jibby and jumpy and fun, but the blur makes an exception. It is very easy to unweight, bunny hop and jump. And, and I think it's because the front end is a little bit taller. I have found when the front end's lower, it makes it a little harder to jump the bike because you have to lift the front end further to bunny hop. So with the taller front end, I think that helps. And I think that's a portion of why the blur feels so fun. And I did find this to be the most fun bike in our whole test. So overall on the descents, I think the blur finds itself in that top position out of our test bikes. The combination of its smooth suspension and its sharp handling make it a blast to ride downhill. So who is the Santa Cruz blur for? I think the blur is the XC bike for a rider much like myself who typically rides a bigger, longer travel bike. So if you're like me, you'll find yourself right at home on the blur. Still, it's, it's no slouch uphill and it is one of the better technical climbers in our test. I just don't think it's quite as quick and efficient as some of the other bikes. It's still fast enough for racing, especially uh, more of those endurance style XC events. And you know, Keegan Swenson has proven this time and time again this year, stacking up wins on wins on wins in all of the major endurance XC events. So XC showdown awards, the Santa Cruz blur is the best descender. That's gonna wrap it up for the blur. We still have the OETH and the summary showdown, so stay tuned.